Professor Francis Young is one of Britain's foremost theologians and writers on religious affairs. She is a popular preacher at City Road Methodist Church, Birmingham. But we also know Francis as the mother of Arthur. Now aged 53, Arthur was born seriously brain damaged. Francis has written about her experiences bringing up Arthur and the challenges this has brought to her faith. We thought their struggles may provide us with some insights as we grapple with the harsh realities of the coronavirus pandemic. But first, how are Francis and Arthur finding lockdown? Well, I have no direct contact with him. It's one of the saddest things about the situation, really. Um, I ring his carers regularly, once a week. I always used to visit once a week and have him home once a week. Um, they assure me that he's fine, he's happy and smiling. Of course, he has no way of understanding the situation. We've never been apart so long in his entire life. And um, so it's been one of the hardest things for me. It's been hard for you, but for him, he, 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 has, he, has he an awareness that you haven't been to see him? That is something that's very hard to gauge. Um, he definitely recognises me and many other people when they're there. Um, what I'm not sure about is whether he remembers if you're not there, if you see what I mean. I suspect he lives his life in the immediate present. And, you know, um, it, it's actually very hard to know whether he has any concept of how long it's been since he's seen me. This, this family disruption for you is typical of what's happening. My wife has yeah. similar issues about her mother in a care home and I know lots of people are getting very distressed about this. Yeah. Lots of lives are being disrupted at the moment. Yeah. And a lot of people are asking, well, we've got this disease, we've got coronavirus. Where does it come from? What does it mean? Um, the Bible is full of references to plagues and so on, and they sometimes seem to be an instrument of God. What's your view of this pandemic as a theologian? Well, it's a very big, complex question, of course, but it has similar questions, similar things uh, riding on it to the questions I was asking myself for years about why my son should have been born um, without the usual capacity to develop. Uh, I mean, if, if the purpose of God is that we should all become uh, good people, uh, what about somebody who doesn't have the capacity, if you like, mm. to develop uh, morally? And, uh, and what's going on when something that seems so tragic is part of life? I think it's really important to understand that we are creatures in a, a total creation, if you like, which fits together in all kinds of different ways and um, the virus is if you like one of God's creatures. Uh, I was um, riding my bike a while back and as I went along I was mentally singing to myself all things praise thee and then I thought that's the virus too um, and I think the truth of the matter is that we don't have easy answers to any of this, but it is part of the whole complex thing um, about a world which is created, vulnerable, fragile, that death is part of life, uh, that uh, organisms are all part of a great system, working together in a kind of ecology, if you like. And if there's one reflection I have about it, it is that the human race has got completely out of kilter with the rest of creation. Um, I mean, the way in which clearly climate change and other things, the destruction of wildlife, um, uh, the sheer population of the human race, we've, we've got out of balance 
with the created order. The ecology has gone all wrong. And I think if you look at nature as a whole, there's a tendency for nature to react when things get out of balance. Um, and, you know, part of what's happening, I suspect, is a kind of natural process of, of waking us up to the fact that we have to change the way in which we relate to the rest of creation, that we're part of it. And, and yet we, as a human race as a whole, have got out of balance. You see, I think one of our problems in Christianity, recently particularly, is that we have got very individualistic. And I think uh, we, the Christian tradition originally was deep, had a deep sense of solidarity, of, if you like, the human race has gone wrong, and in Jesus, the human race is put right. Um, and, and we've turned it into something very individualistic. I think this is yet another instance where, if you like, it's, you have to think much more in, in, in the collective, in the solidarity of the human race, having gone wrong and got, having got so out of balance with nature. Yeah, I, I've had quite a few comments on our Facebook page uh, when we put out services um, yeah. saying that this, um, this, this is a judgment on us for, for, yeah. for, for agreeing to homosexuality or legalising abortion or, or whatever, lots of other things as well, yeah. just those two issues. Um, and yet the word crisis comes from the Greek word. I, I know this because I read it in your book when I was preparing yes. this morning. Crisis means, can mean in certain circumstances, the Greek word can mean judgment. Yes, it does mean judgment. Yeah. It's the word for judgment. But it's, I think it's a word which means judgment in the sense of, of showing things up, exposing things. And um, it, it's not, if you like, judgment as punishment so much as showing up what's wrong. Um, uh, and there's a sense in which you have to show up what's wrong before anything can be put right. Uh, and sometimes a crisis does exactly that. It, it puts people on the spot and they have to react. And they have to realize that um, somehow some of the things which affect us, I mean, even if you take something like war, you know, war is a judgment it's it shows up something deeply wrong in the way human beings are relating to one another uh, and becomes highly destructive um, and i think the way in which we are now a bit out of balance with the natural world um, is is shown up by this kind of crisis and, and actually, the climate crisis is going to be even worse. Um, and, and if this is a kind of forewarning, because very often out of crisis, you, you get change. Mm. And, uh, and actually, things are better afterwards. I mean, take, for example, the Black Death in the Middle Ages. It had a huge social mm. change um, for the better one would say in the long run, despite the loss of life, it meant for the future, social relationships and things were profoundly changed. How, and the whole economics. How has the church interpreted the plagues in the past? Well, uh, there is one example I can give you and uh, right back in the year 260 or thereabouts, um, we have a letter that survives from the Bishop of Alexandria, a man called Dionysius. And he's writing and he tells how most of our brother Christians showed unbounded love and loyalty, never sparing themselves and thinking only of one another. Heedless of danger, they took charge of the sick, attending to their every need and ministering to them in Christ and with them departed this life serenely happy, for many, in nursing and curing others, transferred their death to themselves and died in their stead. 
He then goes on to say that their willingness to stay and care for people and risk death and then to die was the equivalent of martyrdom. And of course, martyrdom in those days was the height of Christian commitment Mm. because there were, in fact, there had only 10 years before been an absolutely massive persecution and a lot of loss of life. So um, he is seeing the Christian commitment to caring. He contrasts it with the people who weren't Christians, who just ran away and threw the dead into pits rather than get contaminated and Mm. and, and didn't care at all. Um, And it seems to me that if you, he doesn't actually say this, but it seems to me that the link with martyrdom shows that what he's saying is there was something about Christian faith Christian assurance in the resurrection, Christian confidence that everything is somehow in the hands of God, and and not even death matters, you know, because in the long run, God is holding everything in his hands, that they were prepared to risk everything in order to care for others. But I'm sure you'll be the first to say that it doesn't mean that Christians should take risks in terms of uh, almost caught in the disease as uh... no you know they used to say you should never seek martyrdom yeah, exactly. you yeah. only only receive it if it if, if it comes um but but also you shouldn't run away from it uh, you shouldn't be disloyal in order to avoid martyrdom yeah so um it, it's getting the balance right isn't it um uh, but i mean what i'm getting at is this this deep sense of trust that somehow it is all in the hands of God. That doesn't mean each one of us is going to be saved. Of course not. Um, But it does have this sense that somehow looking at the bigger picture is really, really important. So can I just switch to something else? Because for me, a few years ago, this question came really sharply with, you may remember, the Zika virus. Yep. Now, the Zika virus only spread around the poorer communities in Latin America, and it didn't get worldwide. But the Zika virus caused pregnant women to have children like my son. And I was really distressed by that Mm. because... For these poor women with very little support, um, uh, no social services, no uh, having to cope with what I coped with for all those years, I just I just could not take in how ghastly that was. Um, And so I think there is a sense in which we have to accept that actually viruses have done lots of good things in the history of the world and 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 scientists can tell you but i mean they've been developing ways of getting healing things into people's bodies by using viruses um but like all these things um there's good and bad and the way the world is somehow is something we deeply need to learn to accept and respect and to accept as a challenge, um, a way in which we're invited to respond in the best possible ways, uh, while trusting that in the long, long run, um, God is always at work bringing good out of evil. That, I think, is the fundamental message of the Bible which you find in all kinds of different ways, running right the way through. And the climax, of course, is the cross, where Jesus himself, the presence of God on earth, takes responsibility for all the bad things human beings do to each other and all the pain and the suffering, which is part and parcel of life, and goes through death to new life. That's almost where I want to finish, but just one final point. And that is, as Christians, we pray. We do believe in God's intervention. Yeah. How should we pray in these circumstances? What should we pray about? 
Well, the starting point is to pray for those facing death, those who are bereaved, the care workers who are risking their lives like those old Christians did. Um, and um, I think the, the, that is the fundamental starting point. But then actually one could pray to God for good to come out of it. Um, for, for, if you like, some of the excesses of the way in which the human race functions now to, to get so horribly out of balance with the rest of the planet. Um, but some of that is changed and we find new ways of being that, that we don't go back to using all the oil that still remains in the ground. Mm. Um, uh, and that somehow we don't go back to polluting the air in our cities so that kids grow up with asthma. You know, I mean, you can find so many uh, different areas where good things are already coming out of it. Uh, and how do we grasp those things um, in prayer, but also in action as, a, as collectively? Because it's not any single one person's responsibility. It's, it's how we take it all forward in solidarity with one another, something we've perhaps learned a bit about during this crisis. And this means not only solidarity among Christians, but solidarity with people of other faiths, other nationalities. Absolutely. Just, yeah. The whole earth. Yeah. The whole earth. Francis, thank you very, very much. OK, well, I hope some of it makes a bit of sense. <laughs> Thank you for joining us online at City Road Methodist Church, Birmingham. If you'd like to know more about us, go to our website, www.cityroad.org.uk, or find us on Facebook and Twitter.